So, um, I'm here in the, uh, what you'd call the overflow movie area, really. Um, bottom of the bedroom steps, there's a shelf there, as you can see. And, I can back up. There's a shelf here as well with uh, uh, premium collections, a few Criterions there, uh, some other boutique stuff, and then just into normal extra overflow DVDs. However, this top shelf is where I keep all my Jackie Chan movies. Uh, he's one of my favourites. We're doing a Jackie Chan marathon this weekend. So we've not decided what films we're going to watch yet, but we're going to pick some films out of, uh, of this lot. So we're deciding now what we're uh, what we're going to watch. So we're going to mix it up with both some of his uh, like his Chinese and his Asian cinema, um, as well as some of the Hollywood efforts that he's done as well. And we're going to try and have a, a fairly mixed bag. So uh, we definitely want that uh, yellow box set that's on the top there, don't we, Laura? What's in that one that we're going to watch? So uh, I think is that one Project A? Yeah, Project A's in there. Okay, so we're watching Project A from that box there. Okay. Armor of God, that's in there too. Uh, yeah, I think I've got a better edition of Armor of God because I bought that to get Project A yeah. um, and a couple of the other ones in there. But I think I've actually got Armor of God separately on a yeah. sort of like a remaster or something. Mm. So have a look at that. Is that on the Blu-rays? Uh, Blu-rays here. Yeah. Uh, there's Armor of God. Yeah. Yeah. So if you put that one out as well. The Armor of God. Yes. Yeah, same. Same thing. So we've got that. Uh, we want to do Super Cop as well. That's the Blu-ray next to it. Uh, that one. That's the one. It's a Spanish import. Of Super Cop mm -hmm. is that. Um, not easily available uh, here in the UK. Um, we said that we'd do. Um, Rush Hour here. Yeah, I think we said we'd do Rush Hour Two. Yep. That's our favourite one of the of the three. Yeah, it's a Rush Hour Two. Around the World in 80 Days? Uh, Around the World in 80 Days, that's a childhood favourite of mine. And I a have bit not of a... seen this one in ages. The first time I saw this, I was about five. Well, it's <laughs> a guilty, guilty pleasure of mine. The only time. I kind of used to have this tradition just all of my own where I'd watch that film every New Year's Eve and did it for years and then obviously stopped. We said we'd do the Tuxedo and the Medallion. Tuxedo. And the Medallion. Medallion. And I think we also said we'd do Rumble in the Bronx. Rumble in the Bronx, yep, yeah, right there. That's a great one, I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, Twin Dragons. Where's that? I think that's just a couple on from Rumble in the Bronx. Twin Dragons, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So how many films are we up to so far then? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we said we were going to try and do 12, um, possibly 14. Uh, we said we need police, ho police story. Well, you've got a few there. There's this? No, that's not the one, that's the remake. He did a few remakes, didn't he? He did, yeah. uh, he did one where he's sort of a drunk and uh, sort of has to earn his, earn his stripes again. Well, there's the first police story there. That's the one. I think that's the one we should do at least, anyway. And then where's police story three? Uh, that's it. You've already got that, and that's Super Cop. Oh, right, is that it? Yeah. Um, did we say we wanted to watch City Hunter, did you say? City Hunter, I think so, yeah, City Hunter. And then The Foreigner? And then the foreigner, yeah, which is this one here. So, there you go, pass you that lot. Just, <laughs> All falling. Show the foreigner, would you, sweet? Piers Brosnan and Jackie Chan. Really so, it's, um, it's only available here in the UK on Netflix, is that. However, I believe it's Poland that I managed to import that from on... Uh, I can't remember whether it's DVD or Blu-ray, actually. DVD, it says that on the, uh, on the case. But, yeah, I, um, I, I don't mind doing the streaming stuff, but I prefer physical media. Um, and found that on Amazon for a, a really good price. So, Your heart uh, will break for Jackie Chan in this one. Absolutely. Well, um, have we got us 12 there? 3, 6, 9, 12, yeah. Right, so we'll call that as 12, and if we decide we want any more, we'll come back. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so, um, we are going to watch for our first film, a film that neither of us have seen, put out in uh, the UK and the US by Dimension Films. Uh, Jackie Chan and Jackie Chan in Twin Dragons. Uh, so I imagine this is going to be the standard sort of either long lost twins having to get together for a common goal sort of thing or twins that are completely like polar opposites sort of <laughs> in character. Well I can see that from the front, one of them looks like an action guy, the other one's a musician. Um, not seen it, looking forward to it. Right. See so you're after it. Yeah. So we've just watched uh, Twin Dragons, our first film. 
Um, this film is basically, it's like I said just before, isn't it? It's the, it's the story of, of two twins separated at birth. We get like a little bit of a flashback scene. Uh, there's a there's a gunman in a hospital who, uh, for whatever reason, it's not really established why he's there. He ends up pinching one of the babies as like a hostage, uh, and in and amongst all the chaos, the the baby ends up getting put to one side, and a, and a drunk lady ends up taking the baby and raising it as her own. Uh, the other other twin stays with the the family that he was originally you know taken from. We're 30 years later and it's Jackie Chan playing the lead uh, the two twins are now called John and uh, Boomer respectively um, Boomer is the twin that was, was taken hostage all those years ago he's now a mechanic, a bit of a street racer, a bit of a thug, he's involved with uh, you know, what looks to be gangsters and um, you know, and sort of, a, a sort of crime uh, whereas John is a a famous composer, uh, not composer, conductor, sorry, plays a um, fantastic piano with an orchestra. And the two stories begin to intertwine when John and his orchestra come to uh, to Hong Kong for a concert. Um, hilarity ensues, you know, uh, the respective girlfriends of the two characters get them mixed up, because obviously they're identical twins. And it sort of goes from there, the bad guys think that John's Boomer, the good guys think that Boomer's John, and, and it's sort of that, sort of them two learning of each other, and uh, it, it more or less sort of does the same thing that um, Double Impact with Jean-Claude Van Damme, which came out a year before this one does, uh, right down to a, a climax in a dockyard as well. Um, even the two personalities of the of the brothers are, are more or less sort of uh, sort of the same. Uh, I'd have to look into that actually and see whether or not this film was actually just you know by chance um, uh, more or less the same thing, or mm. whether it, whether it was a you know it was it was meant to be a copy sort mm. of thing. Nonetheless, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, it refers to itself as a comedic action thriller. I'd say it's more of a comedy. Yeah. The whole thing's very much played for laughs. Jackie mm. Chan looks like he's having a great time doing it. What did <laughs> yeah. you think to it? Oh, I loved it. I really did. We've got off to a good start with this film, really. It. I like the fact that it's the typical mistaken identity of twins kind of thing because you've got Boomer conducting an orchestra and he has no idea what he's doing, so it's stuck there just flailing his arms flailing around his arms. Yeah. I love it I absolutely love it really good really good story behind it you've got the action on one side you've got confusion and they don't realise they're twins until no yeah. and uh, it didn't seem to happen in the end but you both sort of uh, we, we both sort of thought that they were going to end up with each other's girlfriends because it was like um, you know the uh, boom, boomer's girlfriend um, seemed to take to John more and John um John's girlfriend um, certainly seemed to take to Boomer after they ended up uh, sort of uh, getting together after she um, she invites him uh, or asks for him to give her a back rub and he, t- he takes it the other way and, uh, mm. and thinks that she's, she's inviting him to the bedroom sort of thing and then it goes from there yeah. but that doesn't seem to happen uh, yeah uh, I, it's nothing special um, but certainly enjoyable uh, like I say, Jackie Chan does all his own stunts as always. Mm. Uh, thankfully, no um, no major injuries. no major injuries on this one, or any any sort of horror stories to uh, uh, to tell. Just just it ain't gonna stay that way. No, uh, <laughs> just just a daft bit of fun. Some of the films we're going to be watching, where you've seen him picked out, uh, he's he's nearly killed himself on some of them, mm. hasn't he? I'm gonna go five and a half out of ten for that. I'm gonna go six. Well, there you go. Uh, we haven't decided what we're watching next, but you'll see a title card coming up after this very video, and we shall see you after that. So, we are back after um, Around the World in 80 Days, a uh, very loose adaptation of, I believe it's a Jules Verne novel, uh, and that, that fil- this, this film we've just watched is, is widely criticised for being a very loose adaptation. Uh, casts are obviously Steve Coogan, Jackie Chan of course, and uh, Cecile de France, um, playing uh, the, sort of the, the main trio of, of heroes, Coogan playing uh, Phileas Fogg, and Jackie Chan playing Passepartout, and um, Cécile uh, de France playing Monique, uh, an impressionist artist that they meet in Paris. I don't know if she's in the original novel or not, whether she's just a, an introduction for this film. Anyway, I've always loved this film, right from being a kid when it came out. Like I think I mentioned earlier in this, this particular vlog, I've uh, always enjoyed watching this sort of um, on New Year's Eve or around Christmas and New Year, uh, sort of growing up. Um, I got this DVD one Christmas or New Year and it sort of just became a bit of a 
bit of a, a tradition for um, you know for me to, to do that. Then I, I write like it. Is it a brilliant film? No. Is it um, an Oscar winner? No. Is it Jackie Chan's best film? Absolutely not. Um, some of the CGI is pretty terrible. The acting's appalling, especially Arnold Schwarzenegger's cameo. Mm. Um, but do you know what? It's good, clean fun, and subjectively, I love this film. Uh, I don't know what more to say. I mean, uh, Jim Broadbent plays the villain of the piece, uh, Lord Kelvin. Uh, who I believe is based on an actual lord um, who uh, did work in the the sort of science division for Queen Victoria back in the day. Um, whether or not he was a horrible bloke in real life, I don't actually know. But uh, he he sets the wager up and bets Phileas Fogg that he can't circumnavigate the globe in uh, in eighty days, with the the wager being a ten thousand pound bet and also the the head of the science division, and then. You know, it's it's all the the journey that they go along the way. They go to France, to Turkey, China, India, America, and uh, I think that's it, isn't it? Do they have a brief stop in Munich as well? Yeah. They do. Um, but um, just just hilarity ensues. You know, lots of cameos along the way. Uh, you know, Sarney's in there. John Cleese was in it for a, uh, a blink, and you'll miss him. Samuel Owen Wilson. Uh, Owen Wilson, Luke Wilson, his brother. They played the Wright brothers. Kathy uh, Bates. Yeah, Kathy Bates, Rob Schneider, Samo Hung, who has been in a lot of um, Jackie Chan's mm. sort of, you know early films with him. Uh, played uh, one of the uh, is it one of the Ten Tigers? Was it the Ten Tigers? I think. So. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, if I've if I've misquoted that, I'll put the title yeah somewhere underneath as <laughs> as always. Um, but um, recently watched a lot of Jackie Chan films over you know probably the last sort of twelve months or so. We've uh, we've we've watched a lot more of his films, haven't we? Mm. And um, obviously seen a lot of the ones that he's done with uh, with Sam Hung. And then I'd not realised it, obviously, growing up as a kid, who the guy was. And then we saw him, and I was like, oh my god! <laughs> what did you think, sweet? Oh, this. <clears throat> This is just a nice piece of nostalgia. It really, really is. The last time I saw this, I was eight, eight years old, and the only time I saw this. My granddad used to do this thing where whenever we a new film came out in the cinema, he'd take us to go and see it. This was one of them. At the time, I didn't realise that was Jackie Chan as well. I didn't put two and two together. And the funny thing was, I was a huge fan of his animated series, The Jackie Chan Adventures, but I didn't realise that that was Jackie Chan. And realising that now... Oh, it's just well, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. It really does. I love this film. Uh, great plotline, great characters, great actors cast on it. I just love it. It's a nice little film. Funny little film is this. Definitely. It's just just easy to watch. There's nothing nothing spoiling. Mm. Um, you know, you go into it, or at least I've I've always done, knowing it's going to be popcorn fun. It's deafness and. It doesn't take itself too seriously, so we shouldn't as the audience. Mm. When I'm rating it, I'm going to balance uh, both being objective and uh, obviously subjective with it. Subjectively, I love it. Objectively, as I said at the start, it's it's a poor film. Um, so I'm I'm going to go and I'm going to give it a six out of ten, uh, and I think that that's a fair uh, a fair rating for me. Mm. I'm going to go six and a half purely just because it's one of those that. Favourite little childhood film, definitely. Well, there we go. So we'll see you after the next film, after we've had a bit of tea. We're going to go for a for a wander up and down the street and get us, get us daily walking. And, uh, and then we're going to uh, have a nice bit of tea, uh, a bit of gammon and some veg. And then we're going to, this evening, then move on to Rumble in the Bronx, which is one of my absolute favourites. I haven't seen it for years. I can't wait to watch it again. So we'll see you after that. Cheers. So we have just watched the superb Rumble in the Bronx. What a what an absolute film this is! I, I've loved this film for for years. I remember first watching this on I think ITV4 or something daft like that uh, on a Saturday night with my dad and and really enjoying uh, just the the action, the stunts, the comedy, and just the whole thing. Um, it's just just a great film. The the basic premise, uh, as I'm sure most people will know, is that uh, Jackie Chan plays Kyung, who's coming to New York for the first time for his Uncle Bill's wedding. Um, that all happens within the first sort of 15-20 minutes of the film, but after that happens, uh, Uncle goes on the honeymoon and Kyung stays behind to look after the apartment. It's there that he starts to uh, to mix with some of the some of the characters in the neighbourhood. Um, gets on the wrong side of a, a biker gang. 
and and they spend the majority of the film sort of chasing him. Then the biker gang gets involved in a in a diamond theft, um, and then the real bad guys sort of turn up, and it sort of goes from goes from there. Really, he develops a bit of a romance with uh, one of the girls who's involved in the gang after he befriends her her younger brother, who's a disabled lad living in the same building as the. Um, uh, as where Jackie Chan's character Kyung's living uh, in the uncle's apartment um, and it's one of them where eventually they get the coppers involved and all's well that ends well just great fun uh, fantastic martial arts uh, stunt work uh, the bit where he dives from one building the parking garage and he dives into the, the block of flats next door it's phenomenal and they show you in the end of the credits obviously all the bloopers but then all the ones that have gone really well uh, and they they reiterate you know look, he did this and fantastic stuff the, like, it's, it's no wonder the guy's uninsurable is there mm, it's on a blacklist for every American <laughs> yeah, yeah like, he, he literally can't get insurance apparently anymore because he's obviously you know it's, it's, it's be uh, too costly um, but you know this is this is around the time uh, you know this is mid 90s so this is pre rush hour and just about the sort of time where he's Starting, you know, I think you know, sort of really make a bit of a bit of a dent and an impact on on American cinema. He's obviously been, you know, probably about twenty years by this point doing doing films over in China and Hong Kong and uh, and doing the Asian cinema scene. And some of those films are absolutely fantastic. We're going to be watching mm. some of them as we as we get more into this um, this marathon. Yeah, I, I just I really enjoy everything about this about this film. I, I love it, Laura. What did you think of? I really liked this. You know, you were not kidding. This was a good film. Um, oh, I like it. As you were saying at the end, uh, they were showing you all the stunts and how he did it. And that scene where he jumps from balcony to balcony. Oh, I completely agree. Absolutely brilliant. Really shows just how much of a king of stunts he is in this one. I think my favourite is the fact that, as you were saying, he's un- uninsurable. But that's because he's injured in every single film in one way or another. In this one, it's because he's jumping from a bridge to a boat and he shatters his ankle like actually shatters his ankle and from most actors that would be like no no that's it I'm I'm out I'm done not Jackie Chan <laughs> he got a he gets a cast on his leg and then he gets a special sock to put over his leg yeah, which brilliant. he paints as a he, shoe uh, and he continues filming absolutely and they show ankle. you in the you know in the, in the bloopers at the end absolutely fantastic stuff mm. um, I love this film um, yeah just just absolute fantastic I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10 I'm going to give it a seven and a half. There we go. Um, so that is film three uh, of our Jackie Chan marathon. Um, we're trying to keep it fairly light-hearted today, and uh, I suppose to be fair, all of his films are fairly light. I don't think we've got anything in the in the mix of films that we've picked that's um, particularly sort of hard going. Uh, I know he has done a couple more serious ones. Like we didn't pick it this time. Crime Story is one of those. Mm. Anyway, uh, seven and a half for you, an eight from me. And what did we say we're moving on to? Uh, we were going to move on to uh, Tuxedo. The Tuxedo. So Tuxedo, yeah. I've not seen this one for years, but from what I remember, it's a bit of a a bit of a play on sort of like you know like the James Bond type mm. sort of carry on, and uh, uh, just just has a laugh with that really. So so yeah. Most of these are completely new for me. Absolutely. Really. Well, for these, I've tried to pick ones that we either not seen for years, or um, you know, or I've not seen for years, or that we've not seen at all, um, just to sort of keep it, you know, keep it fresh and uh, mm. absolutely, um, absolutely. Love them. I think yeah. Well, I've I've not seen Twin Dragons before, but I've obviously seen Around the World in eighty days, and and I'd seen this before. Mm. Um, but thoroughly enjoying it so far. Yeah. It's, it's great stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we'll see you after that next film. So, we've just watched The Tuxedo, and it's basically Jackie Chan's uh, James Bond effort, if you like. Um, starts off the film, he's playing a character called Jimmy. Um... <laughs> Did that fly distract you? <laughs> yep. We need to stop now, right? Okay, just right. Right. <laughs> So we've just watched the tuxedo, and this is basically Jackie Chan's James Bond effort. In this film, he plays a taxi driver called uh, Jimmy, who gets recruited to become uh, the chauffeur for the movie Secret Agent Clark Devlin. And uh, pretty early on in the film, uh, Clark Devlin gets taken out and hospitalised after uh, a run-in with some goons for the the film's baddie. Um, 
ends up getting uh, Jackie Chan tasked with sort of continuing on the the work of uh, of Clark Devlin and trying to solve the the whole sort of plot of the film. Um, we're then introduced to Jennifer Love Hewitt's character Dell, who's a, a new agent on her first mission, teamed up with the, who she believes is the great Clark Devlin, but it's actually Jackie Chan, who of course is fantastic at his stunts, but he's absolutely inept at everything else. Um, and thus comedy ensues. And I can't remember the chap's name, but the the big bad is a character called Diedrich, uh, who is basically ripping off Quantum of Solace years before they did it, uh, and wanting to poison water, and uh, so that he can have a monopoly on the market. So he's got these little bugs, water strider bugs. They're infected with a deadly disease. They'll land on the water, infect all the drinking water in the reservoirs, and then from there it'll mean that only bottled water, and specifically only his bottled water, will be uh, will be available. So absolute utter nonsense of a plot um, the the tuxedo itself that the film takes its title from is um, a piece of technology from the US government, it's controlled by a, by a smart watch and it basically gives the wearer the ability to do anything, in this film we see uh, Jackie Chan uh, you know his character at least who wouldn't normally have been able to fight, handle some absolutely excellent fight scenes the majority of it, as we know, is Jackie Chan's awesome stunt work. Absolutely mm. fantastic stuff. He does a good job making it look as if it's the suit controlling him. Though. Yeah, making it almost look mechanic. Like There were some bits that were obviously like, right, okay, there'd have been wires or whatever, but a lot of it... like There's a scene in the hotel room where he's sort of up there with the, the blonde lass who's seeing the villain of the piece... And he's fighting off the goons in the in the room there, and you can tell that probably a good eighty percent of that is actually just Jackie Chan in the room with some really good stunt guys. Mm. Um, but yeah, the the suit gives um, gives the wearer the, the power to do pretty much anything controlled by the watch. There's a scene in it where he accidentally knocks out James Brown, and so then has to go and impersonate James Brown at a gig, and it has a thing in it that will make him sing like James Brown or whoever. It, it, just just daft stuff mm. like that. Third act. You know, it's um, the sort of it, it's revealed that he's not really who he's been pretending to be, that sort of thing, and the whole, you know, sort of, uh, you know, hero's going to give up and then has a redeeming last uh, last stand sort of thing, and all's well that ends well. Um, it's just just silly. <laughs> I mean, it is. It was fun. We we laughed it's the whole way through yeah. it. Um, it was just just daftness. Mm. Um, really was just daftness. Laura, what do you think? Sweet? Gotta say, yeah, like you were saying, it's a silly little. Yeah, agent movie, but it's funny. That's what it is. And I gotta say, I like the idea of poison, poisoning, you know, the water supply. If I were gonna take over the world, that's how I'd do it. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> I like the idea of the suit being able to control whoever wears it, and it's got all these different settings on it to make it just a bit easier for the wearer as well. There's a scene it more towards the beginning where he first wears the suit, and he accidentally puts it onto destruction mode and destroys the bedroom. <laughs> I yeah, really like that. That's just, really funny. Yeah, it's brilliant, and I, I suppose a silly little premise, but it works really well with somebody like mm. you know, Jackie Chan because he does all his own stunts and he's a master at absolutely doing all you know his own sort of you know obviously stunts and his uh, sort of special well, not special effects are they um, but his own uh, sort of uh, choreography. There's yeah, the word I'm looking word. for. Yeah. And, um, you know, he he's really, really got a good good eye for like the comedic timing of that sort of thing. Uh, really works just uh, really well. Like, so the, the, it's just silly. It's just just <laughs> silly. Uh, there's there's no more can be said about it really without without waffling, which I think uh, we've we've almost done already. Any any final yeah. thoughts before we rate? Um, I'm just nice funny little film it's one I'd watch again if I need a laugh yeah definitely yeah, absolutely yeah. Um, do you know what? I'm going to give it a six out of ten. Yeah, same here. Well, we've decided that our last film of day one, just reaching over to get the disc, um, is going to be another one that's pretty much at, I watched this a few years ago, um, was the last time I watched it, and it's in the same sort of vein as the tuxedo, it's uh, around the same sort of time and has a, while well, the plot's not the same, has a similar sort of feel to it, if that makes sense. Anyway, it's the medallion. Um, thought that we'd uh, give it a go and... Uh, I'd let Laura have a have a look at it. So we shall see you after that. We have just finished the medallion, and um, no to write home about really isn't this one. Um, I don't know whether it's because I'm watching movies in series, like in sequence. I don't know whether this is just or, or might even be the time of night. Um, but I've normally enjoyed this a lot more 
when I've sort of just gone and stuck it on on you know on its own sort of thing. But when we're you know by this point five movies into a marathon, um, whilst it was entertaining and a good laugh, um, it didn't sort of feel like it was in the same sort of uh, category as a, a you know of quality as as the rest of the things that we've watched. The the basic premise is that you've got um, Lee Evans um, and Claire. Falani uh, joining Jackie Chan. The three of them are playing Interpol agents, and they are after um, basically they're after a guy. I think he's kidnapped a kid, and um, no, I'm making that up. I, I'm talking out of <laughs> absolute yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's it's late. Just I want to go to bed. <laughs> Let's get this one done. So, it is super late. We have just finished watching our last film of day one, which is The Medallion. So, um, the basic premise of this one is that Jackie Chan and Lee Evans, along with uh, Claire, is it Fulani? Um, are Interpol agents. Uh, they're on the hunt for, um, you know, sort of a cardboard cutout of a bad guy in this one. And the, the sort of the MacGuffin of the plot, if you like, is a medallion that has the power to bring people back to life. It's in two parts, but if it's together, it has mystical, magical powers. Uh, there's a young lad involved in it who's obviously, you know, um, sort of the key to controlling it, and everybody wants to uh, basically uh, get a hold of this young lad. Interpol's job is to, to make sure that this, uh, this young kid, Jai, is, is kept safe. Along the way, Jackie Chan's character dies. Uh, and he's brought back to life with the magic medallion, and it sort of gives him special abilities and things like that. And it's basically ends up being a bit of a showdown at the end in a in a sort of a, a castle villain sort of lair, if you like, between Jackie Chan and his um, his cast of characters against the the bad guy. Um, and again, another one of those all's well that ends well sort of uh, ones. It's it's not not a great film, isn't this? I've I've enjoyed it a lot more when I've watched it um, on its own. You know, previously, but when you're watching them, sort of five films into a series like where we're doing now, it's not really, um, it's not really come out in the same sort of level of quality as what we've watched before. And you know, I mean, we've just watched Tuxedo, which isn't a masterpiece by any chance, but but this didn't sort of live up to that same level of sort of comedy and action. Chan himself puts in a great performance, uh, as he does with pretty much every film that he's in. To be fair, uh, Lee Evans is is good comic relief, and. Um, you know the, the the rest of the cast is all right. The story's all right. It's just all a bit lackluster, mm. and uh, I suppose that's that's really sort of my my thoughts on it. What's your what do you think? I liked it. Um, it's definitely got its funny bits in it. Yeah, and I've gotta say the idea of a medallion giving people special abilities, bringing people back to life, and making them immortal, giving them super speed. I could I could do with a few of those abilities. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, mm. uh, I like Lee Evans in it. To be fair, I've only ever seen him as a stand-up comedy, you know, as the sweating and everything. <laughs> but in this, it was great. Oh, dear. Uh, in this, he actually played a really funny role. You know, he plays the bumbling agent who doesn't quite know what he's doing, thinks he's on top and everything. You know how you said it? I can't remember which character it was. You said there was a character in another film that we watched that reminded you of Rimmer from Red Dwarf. Well, I thought that Lee Evans... Around the world I thought Lee Evans' character in this reminded me of Rimmer from mm. Red Dwarf. No, because I'm going to be head librarian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, I think I think really we've, we've sort of said it all for, for the time of night that it is. We're coming on mm. one o'clock in the morning and I think we're both knackered and it were all right it's it's a bit of popcorn fun um i certainly wouldn't go out of your way to watch this one uh, i think there's better uh, jackie chan films that you could watch both his action and his comedy and um you know I, I, if it's on and you've got no better to do why not i'm gonna go um and i'm gonna say four out of ten for that i'm gonna say five okay well, there you go. We haven't decided what we're kicking off with tomorrow, uh, but I shouldn't think we'll be up at the crack of dawn. So after a, a nice lay-in and a sausage and bacon butty, uh, we will crack on with the next film. Cheers. Watched um, The Armour of God. 
and uh, this film is from the mid 80s put out by the uh, the Golden Harvest Film Group in Hong Kong uh, starring obviously Jackie Chan as all the films in this uh, marathon are uh, Jackie is playing a retired backing singer from a band who's now a treasure hunter and when his old bandmate turns up to say that their uh, their friend Laura has been kidnapped uh, by a cult and, and basically needs uh, Jackie's help to uh, to get her back and the sort of central plot point is the armor of God. It's uh, it's an armor that if anybody wears it, supposedly wields the the sort of the power of God. Jackie has just recovered the uh, the sword from this armor and uh, sold to a to a private collector who's who's got three pieces of the of the five piece armor. The cult that's kidnapped the friend has the other two pieces. So Jackie and um, and his friend strike up an alliance with the, the private collector who has the three pieces of the suit, they agree to borrow it so that they can use it as a bargaining chip to get the friend back from the cult, and the story sort of goes from there, really. It's it's a good little action film, and, you know, very much in the in the sort of the, the same sort of vein as Indiana Jones and, uh, you know, a lot of these other sort of action-adventure films that sort of take their inspiration from 30s and 40s serials. Uh, the stunt work is absolutely fantastic in this, right from the offset, uh, when Jackie's stealing the the sword in the opening sequence of the film, uh, the you know the absolute the choreography of the stunt work and the the sheer sort of magnitude of what he's trying to do um, straight away is is brilliant. Uh, you know, opens with a fantastic sequence of stunts where he's escaping the the sort of the the ruins of a castle where the uh, the tribe that are worshiping the sword are there, sort of worshiping it, and they're about to do what looks to be a sacrifice or something like that, and he steals the. The sword from them, and then he's then he's sort of daredevil escape is is brilliant. Uh, it's um, you were saying, weren't you? It's got that very famous sort of um, injury uh, where Jackie Chan uh, sort of well, he was he, he was swinging off a branch or something, and the branch snapped. And mm, yeah, basically what happened was he was jumping from a wall, and he uses the branch to swing and land safely to the ground. Now in the film, he does that perfectly. But Jackie Chan, never the perfectionist, always wants a couple more takes because he's never happy with the first one. So he does the whole thing again, but the branch snaps and he falls 40 feet to the ground and he hits the back of his head on some rocks as he lands and that causes a massive skull fracture. There's a bleed on his brain and he's sent straight to the hospital and that damn near killed him. It genuinely... Yeah, it nearly is, killed him. That's one of his most famous stunts. Absolutely, that? the the amount of effort that the man puts in, um, mm. you know, for his um, for his work and his craft is is un- unbelievable. Mm. But yeah, good little film, you know, good action adventure sort of thing. The, you know, it, one thing Jackie Chan seems to do perfectly with all the films that we've watched so far, and indeed most films I've seen him in. I know he does do some more serious turns, um, but the majority of things seems to balance like the action and the comedy really well um so sort of the interplay between the two leads you've got Alan and Jackie um you know obviously Alan, Alan was the lead singer in in Jackie's old band and he's now gone on to to big success whereas obviously Jackie Chan's gone off to uh, also to big success but as a as a treasure hunter the kidnapped girlfriend was also in the band and they they both fancied her so there's there's sort of that sort of like uh, who's she going to want to be with and then we're introduced to May who's the the daughter of the the private collector uh, the baron um basically goes along on the adventure to to make sure that all the uh, sort of you know the the gears looked after and that the lads do what they say they're going to do uh, and she's a really good um good companion for the you know for them as well sort of keeps mm. them on their toes and mm. So I think it's it's just just daftness to be fair is, yeah. is the film, but really really well done. I right enjoyed it, and I'm gonna give that same as I gave Rumble in the Bronx. I'm gonna go eight. Mm. I really liked this. This film gave me a slight Indiana Jones feel. Yeah. In a way, yeah, running away from tribes, trying to find objects, even being a treasure hunter. I'm gonna give it an eight as well. Definitely, I really liked it. The stunt work's incredible. There's a scene at the beginning where he's hiding behind this barrel thing, and it's just been shot. There are a bunch of arrows sticking out of it. This barrel proceeds to roll down the hill. And he's rolling with it. Yeah. He's like, I could not keep that up. How does he do it? It's amazing it's some of the stuff he does. I mean, the, the final shot, he jumps off of a, a mountainside. And you know, you can clearly see he's wearing a parachute if all goes wrong, which is fair play. But he jumps off a mountainside and glides through the air until he lands on, on the balloon of a, a hot air balloon. Mm. And it's just, yeah. It's incredible. That's, that's the closing shot of the film. Fantastic stuff. Mm. Uh, we've not decided what we're going to go on to next, but we will have a think and then you'll see a title card. So cheers. Yeah. 
So we've just watched Rush Hour 2 and um, yeah, good little film. This was my introduction to Jackie Chan. You mm-hmm. talked before about how you were you know, obviously introduced to Jackie Chan through the animated series but in live action yeah. through Around the World in 80 Days. Yeah, Around the World in 80 Days. Uh, this is the first film I remember seeing him in. I've always loved this film right from being a, you know, from being a young kid and it basically follows on from the first Rush Hour film, does this one. Uh, we find Carter and Lee in Hong Kong. Carter's on holiday. Lee's supposed to be showing him round. Lee ends up getting involved in uh, another case to bring down a chap called Ricky Tan, who is uh, believed responsible for a bombing at a US embassy. And the plot sort of evolves from there, and it turns out that Lee and Ricky Tan have personal backstory, and uh, that there's a counterfeit money um, sort of operation going on with basically the end game being to launder a counterfeit money through um, through the casinos in Vegas. The the thing of it being with the counterfeit money is that uh, the, the plot sets up that in the 50s the US government had sold uh, a printing press and some plates to uh, to gain favour with the country to buy oil and, uh, and that's how they've managed to get out of the country so they are counterfeit in the sense that they've not been printed by the US government but to all intents and purposes other than when they're burned they burn a different colour because of a different use of ink it's practically undetectable. So, it's your typical buddy cop action film. Jackie Chan again does all his own stunts, and uh, there's not really anything sort of uh, over the top in terms of you know what he does with the action and the stunts in this one. It's all fairly standard stuff mm-hmm. for for Jackie Chan, but that's not to take anything away from what he's doing because it's absolutely fantastic stuff all the same, and. It's quite funny because, as we've said quite a lot a few times through this, Jackie Chan's he always plays like the leading man. He's yeah. sort of got a comedic edge to it in, in mm. most things we've seen him in. But in this, whilst you know he is obviously um, playing it with a comedic edge, Chris Tucker is the very much yeah. the comic relief of the two of them, and the the two of them mm. just just work together so well. They do make like two halves of a perfect team. You've got Jackie Chan, who's more of uh, the serious agent he's wanted to get things done he does most of the fighting then you've got Chris Tucker who's sort of he thinks he's better than he is he's a bit bumbly bit of an idiot doesn't fight as well as he should it's just comedic but it works really well together yeah and he's got more confidence hasn't he whereas yeah. um, obviously uh, Jackie Chan's Lee is a lot more mm-hmm. subdued in, in character but has actually got the skills to back it up mm-hmm. and it, it's just the the, the amusement that, that follows from that. Yeah. Any other thoughts on it? Uh, just what you were saying about his stunts. It's all it, there's nothing out of there's nothing over the top in this one. It's all sort of fairly easy to follow. If you know what I mean, like the only injury he receives in this is uh, when he injures his leg climbing all that bamboo at the beginning. I still which is it. which is no, it's good, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. we don't want him getting. Uh, Getting injured, but you no, know, with with the, the stunt where you know it's, it's not like the last film we watched. He dived off a mountain onto a bloody mm. hot air balloon, and you know he um, cracked his head open and damaged his hearing, falling off of a you know broken tree, mm. um, and and other things. And there's we've got Project A to watch at some point where he jumps off that roof and goes through the canopies and mm. uh, damn near breaks his back. With this, it was all a little more subdued, uh, yeah. but still very impressive. You know, there's a there's a scene where they're in a massage parlor and they're fighting in their uh, their dressing gowns and their pajamas, and he's flipping all over the place. And I always find it brilliant how he makes use of furniture. Mm, yeah, he's done that a few times. Like you know, he'll bring that into it. Like you're saying, he was rolling down the hill in a pot, wasn't he? Um, mm. In one of the other films, and in this one, he used a table to his advantage, and you know, a few other. There's a scene where he's hanging from a pole, and a truck sort of comes by, and he's sort of hanging onto this uh, rope, but he's running alongside of it. This truck as it's going by. Yeah. All oh, right. It's, um, it's just just good, uh, yeah. good fun. Um, that's my my favourite of the Rush Hour films, which is why we why we picked this one. Mm. Um, I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. I'm gonna give it a six and a half. So there we go. We haven't decided again what we're watching next. We've got the we've got the stack there, so we'll uh, we'll have a nosy in it. And again, you'll see the next title card. So cheers. Mm-hmm.